Hey guys, what's going on? This is Stormmaker X, and welcome to another edition of the Mandalorian Army Kit Build Series. Uh, this is going to be the start of a new video trend that's going to show you everything you need to know how to do a Mondo Armor Kit from scratch. That's right, this is going to be focused on nothing but scratch building, and I want to show you far as how to go about as far as making it from all the way from A all the way to Z. So, with that being said, uh, with this being the first video in that trend, this one is Armor Kit 2.0 Preparations. And I'm going to focus as far as uh, what plastic to go for and as far as how to cut it out. So, uh, first off, you definitely want to go ahead and get a plan as far as how you want to build your armor. Okay? So, in other words, what I would suggest doing before going after whatever plastic you want to get and far as uh, what style you want to go for, I highly recommend getting a sketch or a rough draft done first. That way you have a general idea and a general plan to go for. As you can see, I have done that. Uh, this is still going to fall under the Death Watch style, just like 1.0 and 1.1 were. And it's going to, I mean, it's definitely going to help you try to stay consistent as you're building it. And uh, it definitely gives you a general idea how it looks like, you know, outside what you're planning mentally. And as you can see, uh, it's got the shape for the Death Watch. I still kept the original templates that I had in mind for 1.1. And in this case, I am using them now. So, uh, long story short, I am recycling. <laughs> so, in other words, whatever template you come up with and you like it and you want to go ahead and use it again, definitely keep your paper templates because, eh, you don't know when you're going to use them again. It's kind of like using a sewing pattern. You don't want to throw your pattern away once you're done, you know, making whatever you want. You kind of want to save it just in case you do it again. So I highly recommend keeping whatever paper templates you make, unless it's just been cut up or, you know, it's been wrinkled or it's been trashed or, or something like that. Then yeah, go ahead and make a brand new set. Anyway, now we got that out of the way. Uh, plastics, very important. Uh, there are several different plastics you could easily go for. Um, first of all, is the most common one. It's called Sintra Foam Board. Okay. Sintra is probably about, that one's probably the easiest one to go for. And it's also the easiest one to find in some cases. Uh, Celotex is one of the companies that makes it. Uh, there are several different name brands, of course, but that's just the name one. Uh, the thing about Sintra, it's very easy to shape and form. And it's also, uh, you can actually, you know, you can actually cut it out easier. You can also do different things with it. The only thing about Sintra is that uh, it's not exactly very heat resilient, for lack of better wording. It's light, which is not a problem. And, it, you know, it can actually, well, I guess it can flex a little bit. But the problem with Sintra is on hot days it can easily warped so in other words if you're planning to put the armor on and everything like that when you get to a con then yeah you can definitely it shouldn't give you any problems but if you're like if you're thinking about putting it on and you leave it in the car yeah be prepared to pay the price for that <laughs> so uh, in other words don't take it with you unless you're gonna put it on now uh, styrene. Styrene is another thermal plastic you can easily go for. Uh, that one is a little bit more heat resilient. So in other words, it takes more heat to shape versus styrene. Okay, so you could probably leave it in a car and you wouldn't pay for it as nearly as bad. And it shouldn't warp really or give you any problems. The only thing about styrene is uh, as you're heating it and you're trying to shape it and everything like that, it tends to be like glass. So, uh, whatever nicks or cuts that you didn't want to apply on it and it did and you try to smooth that and everything like that, chances are it could easily uh, split on you. So, in other words, if you're going to use it, be warned. Try to keep it as smooth as possible on the edges and try not to cut into areas you don't want to. So especially if you're going to use a Dremel tool that has, you know, a disc in it. 
so be very careful with that I've heard of people using ABS and um, PVC plastic sheets to go ahead and make their armor which I haven't tried so I couldn't really give you any details based on it but if a uh, if ABS and PVC is anything like I know it's probably going to be even more resilient to high impact you know in other words people bump it into you or probably you know like uh, not just bumping into but maybe even uh, someone getting spooked or something like that and they jump right on top of you or something like that you know crazy stuff or probably some heavy object trying to you know being swung by accident and then someone hitting you you know it's going to be a little bit more resilient far as the damage part far as heat and other things elements like that i'm not sure i couldn't tell you and i don't want to mislead anybody but Sintra and styrene i can tell you more about because i played with it more uh in this case for armor kit 2.0 i'm going to go with Sintra. there's nothing wrong with going with the other ones Sintra is a little bit easier to work with and it's also faster so uh, to keep myself from spending months and years on the same project I'm going to try to speed it up by doing it right so uh, as time comes I will probably make the armor towards a lot more resilient but for now let's just go ahead and uh, stick with Sintra it is the most one of the most preferred plastics used by the Mercs um, I know it says foam board on the end of it but it's still a thermal plastic so you can easily work with it and you can actually shape it and do different things with it. So, just something to throw out there. Now, uh, one of the things I'm gonna go ahead and show you, uh, the beauty about using Styrene and uh, Sintra is that they can both be cut by using an X-Acto knife or a box cutter. Now, you can easily do that. So, I got my box cutter right here, just like this. And what you wanna do well, once you get done uh, following the template and making the outline for it, take your box cutter and try to get as close to the edge as possible, not on it if you can, but as close as you can and just simply cut it, just like that. As you can see, there's already a line right here uh, where I did earlier. And what you want to do, you kind of want to just keep on doing it just like that and try to you know, get the shape that you want it. You can always sand it down to the red line after you get done cutting out those pieces but great care make sure you know where your hands are where your fingers are and try to be careful when handling the blade you definitely want to make sure you have a good grip and try to you know make sure that you're not cutting it towards yourself or you know where you can actually start bleeding uh, and then also try to make sure you don't cut past the red that's a big no-no try to stay on the outside of it uh, this is the part where everything you learned from kindergarten about staying within the lines when coloring uh, Yeah, this is where it really counts. So <laughs> um, Definitely be careful with it and just be cautious and That's how you go ahead and get started start by getting the you know the template made out and then cut accordingly uh, There'll be other pieces. I'm going to be cut out. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out too. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started with that, and uh, see you guys in the next video. Okay, I've already cut out three of the pieces, but I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what I mean by showing what it's going to be like as you're doing it. So therefore, you get an idea as far as the difficulty and as far as how you need to be careful with. But as you're doing it, what you want to do, like I said, you want to kind of start with a decent enough space. The only thing I don't like about doing this is that I need another hand and I don't, but you want to do this and just slowly work your way across the edge as much as you can. Try not to cut into the red and then just do that. Now it's not going to be cut all the way on your first run, so you're going to do it again and you're going to do it about at least two to three times, applying a little bit more pressure as each time you do it and then just follow it, okay? follow it all the way through and that way there see just like that and that's exactly what you want to do uh, don't try to kill yourself trying to do like that while it's still kind of you know still part of the plastic uh, the sheet that is and what you want to do is just go straight like this you can always go back to adjust it later okay all right there we go
and then just slowly work it down all the way there we go see just like that and then you want to do it all okay, as close as you can to the piece as possible the particular areas like right here and here you can always come back to later as you actually have the piece in hand but as a foam board you're you know you're gonna be having one of your hands on the foam board to make sure it doesn't you know uh, get away from you so but yeah that's that's what it's all about so uh, I hope that helps you a little bit as far as getting an understanding how to do it and like I said just be patient with it and just be careful you know, as far as where your hands are. So, all right. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button. If you have any comments or questions, hit them down in the comments down below. I'd like to hear from you guys, so I will reply ASAP. And furthermore, if you'd like to keep up with any future videos, hit the subscribe button. Hope you guys have a good day.